Coming up in the morning edition, neighboring Florida bracing for a monster storm. The government reveals the latest legal move in shanty towns. And a committee to review marijuana laws in the Bahamas is being appointed. It's a Wednesday. Good morning, everyone. I'm LaDawn Davis, and this is the Morning Edition. You're waking up to partly cloudy skies on the outside, as seen here on our ZNS Tower Cam. Your Wednesday traffic commute is normally quite busy, and as usual, many pedestrians are crossing our streets at this very moment. While the rules and concerns for pedestrians are the focus of our traffic report. Siaska Adderley is standing by with the latest. Good morning, Siaska. Good Wednesday morning, all. We're coming to you live from the Blue Hill Road area, more specifically just outside of the Yellow Elder Gardens Primary School and that means that we are in a school zone and here to tell us what that means and what we should be looking out for is Corporal Decore Barr from the Traffic Division. Good morning Corporal Barr, how are you on this Wednesday? I'm good Siesca, good morning to you, good morning Bahamas. Okay, now we're in a school zone so just a reminder to motorists what we should be um, adhering to in a school zone. Yes, um, in the school zone, you would want to pay particular attention to where the school, go school zone starts and ends. Uh, you would also want to pay special attention to the pedestrian crossings. Um, or some persons say the zebra crossing. Uh, these are very important. These would hinder, or sorry, these would event some of the traffic accidents involving pedestrians once we pay attention to these small particular things. Okay, now what is the speed limit that people traversing through this area should be traveling at? Well, the speed limit at the, at the start of a school zone is 15 miles per hour. Um, that's not all day. That, that speed limit has a start and stop time. Um, it starts at 7.45 a.m. and end at 9.30 a.m. And then again at 2.45 p.m. and ends at three at 4.15 p.m. Okay, now I'm noticing that we're ending the school zone. Is that still a 15 mile per hour limit in this area where we're standing? Because it seems as if people are whipping by more than 15 miles per hour. Yeah, um, they, these persons, are, for whatever reason, are not adhering to the speed limit in this area. Um, but however, once they get out of the speed limit, then they would the speed limit would change to the regular uh, or normal speed limit, which would be 30 miles per hour on the streets of New Providence. Okay, now, Corporal Barr, just before you go, let's reiterate or, I guess, stress the importance of the pedestrian crossing that is behind us and the fact that you said officials don't, I mean, motorists and pedestrians don't really take heed to that crossing. Yes, um, we have a lot of persons who, on this in this area, um, once they headed to school, they would just cross wherever they meet the road. Um, that's a no-no. That's something that we're trying to avoid. Uh, the Ministry, correction, the Road Traffic Department, they have crossing guards in these areas who would assist persons, uh, students, adults as well, with crossing the street in a timely and safe manner. So what is the danger of those who are not adhering to the pedestrian crossing? For persons who are not adhering, they're at risk of getting into a motor accident, which could likely cause accident or death. All right. Injury or death. All right. Thank you so much, Corporal Decore Barr from the Traffic Division. And this morning, we're talking all things that you need to know when you're in a school zone. That is the time the limit, the speed limit, and also the pedestrian crossings. So parents and guardians, when you're t picking up and dropping your school children off, be mindful of these rules. Back to you in the studio, LaDawn. Thanks a lot, Siaska. Now on to our top story, the government taking steps to prevent further construction in the, any of the existing shanty towns in this country. This decision comes as shantytown residents await a court hearing to fight being evicted from those communities. Chairman of the Shantytown Action T Task Force, Senator the Honorable Dion Folks, on the legal action. The Attorney General has made application to vary the, the, the order with respect to the shanty towns to restrict any further construction in all the shanty towns throughout the country. Um, what we want to do is halt any further development or expansion of the existing shanty towns. There's one incident of Golden Isles Road that occurred about two weeks ago where the Ministry of Works put a stop order on a new construction. We would want to ensure that there are no new construction until the court comes up with a final order. 
Efforts are now underway to assemble a team to oversee the local discussion on the local marijuana laws. Health Minister Dr. The Honorable Dwayne Sands says members of the committee which will, will review marijuana decriminalization will be chosen from a wide section of the community in order to ensure that all views are properly represented. So far, former president of the Bahamish Christian Council and supporter Bishop Simeon Hall and former Deputy Commissioner of Police Quinn McCartney have been selected as co-chairs of that committee. However, Dr. Sands says the selection process continues. The um, cabinet has referred the matter to the Ministry of Health within the last few weeks. We have now appointed the um, co-chairs and we will move with all reasonable haste to get the right people on this committee. If um, if it turns out that, that somebody in the committee happens to be Rastafarian, not a problem. But if we need balance, obviously you don't want a committee where the views are going to represent only one side of the story. So there should be some for, for and some uh, maybe that have more conservative views. Also this morning, the search continues for three boys who escaped from the Simpson Penn Center five days ago. Four boys were initially missing. However, one of them was returned by a parent or guardian. Two months ago, 13 boys escaped from the facility through a hole in the roof. They have since been returned. Meantime, officials say efforts are underway to strengthen security at that facility. But they are appealing to family members to assist in returning the boys to the school. Well, our neighbors to the north in Florida and Tallahassee are preparing for a Category 4 storm and a strong evacuation order. Joining us live in studio with the details is Chief Meteorologist Basil Dean. Good morning, Basil. Uh, good morning, LaDawn. Uh, as you said, dangerous uh, Hurricane Michael, now 140 miles to the south of uh, Panama City, Florida. It's moving toward the north at around 13 miles per hour, and uh, this dangerous storm is expected to make landfall uh, later on uh, this morning or during the early morning hours. And uh, storm surge and uh, torrential rainfall is going to be a major factor uh, this morning as uh, Michael moves uh, towards the north. You can also see those feeder band working their way towards the south over central Cuba. And and uh, just a secondary band uh, just across uh, the Lutrus and uh, Cat Island area. That will be firing up pockets of showers and thunderstorms as well as Michael make that uh, trek towards the north. Outside of our studios, it is partly cloudy. Your temperature is 79 degrees. Relative humidity, 88%. Southerly winds at 7 miles per hour. Biometric pressure, 1,013.3 millibars. That is 29.92 inches, and it is steady. Temperatures around the islands this morning. Green Toll Key at 79. Also, Marsh Harbor, 79, 79. In Freeport, Grand Bahama, the Berry Islands, 82. 83 degrees in Alistan, Bimini, Harbor Island, 82, Roxanne, Lutra, 81, 81 in Otterstown, Cat Island, Staniel Key, 81, a couple more 81s in Kemp Space, on Andros, also Fresh Creek in Central Andros. San Salvador and Rumkey, more 81s, 81s. Also in Crooked Island, Clarence Town, Long Island, Ragged Island, Acklands, 80 degrees, Matthew Town, Niagara, 80 as well, the Turks and Caicos Islands, 80 degrees. And your boating forecast for today for all areas, southeast winds, 12 to 18 knots. Wave fights, they're going to be 3 to 6 feet with some moderate swells generated uh, by uh, Michael. High tide, 8.16 in the morning, low tide at 2.37 in the afternoon. And that's going to do it for your first look at what of the morning edition. Stay tuned, your forecast for tonight is still ahead. Thanks a lot, Basil. And still to come, a mother shares her battle with cancer and efforts to survive. That story and more when the Morning Edition comes right back. If you own a portfolio of securities within a brokerage account, like stocks, bonds, or mutual funds, you can access a hassle-free loan, known as a margin loan, based on the value of that portfolio. Your investment portfolio is essentially used as collateral for a cash loan. And the benefits are numerous. Simple and straightforward application, quick turnaround, a more competitive interest rate, no requirement for monthly payments. Contact us for more information on margin loans. 
Need insurance for your valuables? Shield Insurance is the answer for you. Offering friendly, professional service at competitive prices. Our experienced staff at Shield Insurance work hard to ensure that you get the right coverage for your car, home, or business. Now introducing our new premium financing program designed to make it easier for government workers and employees of approved businesses to receive car and home insurance. Visit Shield Insurance on Thompson Boulevard or call 356-7202. If you've been dreaming of a new kitchen, head to CBS Bahamas. Spend $50 or more during the CBS Bahamas Fall Fix-Up. And you could win Pratt & Lambert paint, Pro Craft cabinets, and Wilson Art countertops to transform your kitchen. Get everything you need to fix up for fall. And enter to win at CBS Bahamas Southwest Plaza, Carmichael Road. A mother in her late 30s with two young daughters had her dreams of having a son dashed when she was diagnosed with stage 3 breast cancer nearly two years ago. The breast cancer survivor says it's her strong faith in God, support from family and her children that were the driving forces behind her will to just beat it. I feel a lump. I started to cry. For 38 year old mother of two, Shanique Brown, finding a lump in her left breast after a hit and run accident was a bit traumatizing. Not taking any chances, Shanique was diagnosed with stage 3 breast cancer. She acted quickly and rushed to the United States to seek chemotherapy treatment, which she says nearly took her life. It was horrible, you know, um, that I, um, I was over there by myself. My family all works and, you know, so everyone had stuff to do. My mom had my kid, my family had my kids, so, and when I got home, they would have to welcome me and took care of me, you know, and preparing for the second round, which was two weeks after, went to have, originally they said I would have, have eight rounds, but I ended up having 12 rounds. The nurse that was administering the, the chemo, he he pushed he um he inserted the 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 um the insulin too too fast so immediately I just brought everything up I I was sick I was upset I was I was frustrated because for one they couldn't get the port needle in right and with her hair falling out and just a few more rounds of chemotherapy treatments to go Shanique says the unthinkable happened and doctors had to expand radiation and chemotherapy treatments. June of last year, I had a double mastectomy with skin sparing and reconstructive surgery. So what they did was they took up um, a lot of my breast tissues uh, from, from the left side, a lot from the right side, and, and did some other stuff. Um, I had eight lymph nodes removal. And then um, August, August 8th to September, 26, I was over there for eight weeks um, doing 25 rounds of radiation. And um, after all of that, I was still doing my follow-ups. And then this year, they told me that they saw a tumor on the right side. With a family history of ovarian cancer, Shanique says all of her siblings got tested and were cancer-free. However, she says she is concerned that she may pass on the BRCA gene to her two young daughters. I had a genetic counselor come in and she gave me information to pass on to my sisters, my brother, um, to let them know that they need to be tested also, you know, because it's in the family. So it's nothing that they can run from. So they gave me information to give each one of my sisters, my brother, to let them know that they need to be tested for it. They have, all of them have. All of them went to have their mammograms done and they're fine.
same time, an organization which stands out in its fight to help residents across the Bahamas is also in need. Director General of the Bahamas Red Cross, Caroline Turnquist, says the society's budget each year runs from $550 to $650,000, depending on activities planned for the year. However, she says the organization is still financially challenged. Turnquist says she is disappointed in the funds raised at this year's Red Cross Fair, which is one of their biggest fundraising events. But she remains optimistic that with some new minds coming on board soon, things should make a positive turnaround. We're getting on a new, a new committee, but we're looking at having some more activities to draw, to draw the crowd. And, you know, personally, I wouldn't mind having an online fair, I swear. <laughs> but, you know, you have to think outside the box. And so we will be pursuing those initiatives, uh, you know, as we meet as a committee moving forward. Currently, we are focused on getting the ball, but um, in another month or two, we'll be running the ball and fair committee meetings concurrently so that, you know, by the time it's the fair, which may, I may add, the fair is next year, April the 6th, 2019. So if, we, if anyone wants to mark that event, it's April the 6th, will be our annual Red Cross Fair. Well, close to 40 students from the Social Science Department at the Anatar Rogers Secondary School participated in a road traffic survey over the National Heroes Day holiday. It's all a part of the students' geography, BGCSE, national examination set for May of next year. Teacher at the Anatar Rogers High School, Shatanya Mortimer, says this survey is a crucial portion of that national examination. Actually, they're doing a traffic uh, surveillance study um, of the Oaks Field roundabout and so we would have had them position at various spots around the roundabout. Right now it's after uh, 10 and they are actually doing their field um, works sketch of the Oaks Field roundabout. Um, they would have then recorded various types of vehicles and in particular they're finding that the personal car is the majority the, the vehicle that they're finding the most and for more than a year now, the pancakes, omelets, and waffles, or also known as POW truck, has been serving up some unique breakfast items from cracked chicken, shrimp, and lobster to omelets and a variety of pancakes. Owner Zavia Roll shared with us some of her top sellers. We Bohemians, we love up a chicken, right? So it's cracking clock. We call it the cracking clock, and it comes with the classic waffles, which is the regular buttermilk waffles. And then our second favorite right now is becoming the shrimp mania. So it's cracked shrimp with also waffles. And you can always upgrade to the red velvet, the strawberry, the blueberry, chocolate chip, chocolate. The company, which opened in February 2017, continues to gain popularity, so much so that they've gotten a bigger truck, increased the number of pop-up events that they do, and soon, Pow, Pow Truck will be offering their services full-time. The reason why we established the pop-ups every Saturday, because after the first time we went out, people were like, where, where can we get you every day? And so we decided to go with the pop-up, and now it's expanded to the point where we can go full-time. Listen, Fisher, it looks like we need to get some of that POW truck. No, no, um, not for me. I'm trying <laughs> to stay in shape, and we have some guys here in the studio today. I don't think they need that either, because they have a big event coming up next week, the World Junior Judo Championship. You see those tall looking, strappy looking fellas. I was going to do some demonstration with them yet today, but yesterday I was walking my shih tzu, I pulled my gore, so I won't be able to do the demonstration today. Hopefully by Friday I'll be back in shape, but I want everybody to support the event coming up next week, and the guys are going to tell us about that coming up to Sony in Sports. That story and more ahead in sports. for your valuables? Shield Insurance is the answer for you. Offering friendly, professional service at competitive prices. Our experienced staff at Shield Insurance work hard to ensure that you get the right coverage for your car, home, or business. Now introducing our new premium financing program designed to make it easier for government workers and employees of approved businesses to receive car and home insurance. Visit Shield Insurance on Thompson Boulevard or call 356-7202.
What you see and hear on this television station is governed by IRCA's Code of Practice for Content Regulation. The Code of Practice covers matters relating to program content that are of concern to the community, such as local content, news, current affairs, programs for children, advertising, including political advertisements, and the responsibilities associated with broadcasting in the Bahamas. The Code also covers aspects such as access services for the hearing and visually impaired, and the procedure for lodging a complaint about anything broadcast by this station. The code is available on the IRCA website at www.ircabahamas.bs. To receive a copy of the code by mail or in person, you may telephone IRCA at 242-393-0234. Family Island Dialing is toll-free at 1-242-300-8722. Or you may send a request by email to info at urkabahamas.bs. ZNS is everywhere you are when you download the new ZNS app. Watch our live channel to keep up with what's going on in the nation. News updates, we've got you covered. Tune into our radio stations with just a swipe. On the road, on the go, we're here with you. Available for download on the App Store and the Google Play Store. What amazing idea to go into the communities and into our world and into our country and into the homes of, of people and into the lives of outstanding and extraordinary people um, all over the country. Um, I think that telling those stories, uh, again, helps us to connect to the notion of, of, okay, how can I live a better life? How can I be better? Um, this is how this person achieved it. Where can I find common ground so that my life can match up as well? And so Ordinary People is an amazing, amazing concept. And I'm excited to be a part of the Ordinary People family. You thought it was the talk of the town, but get ready for more. More energy, more excitement, exhilarating, compelling, informative, educational talk on The Conversation. I'm Shanique Miller. Pull up a chair with a cup of tea and join me weekdays at 4 on Radio Bahamas, 1540 AM, 104.5 FM, and The Light, 810 AM for The Conversation. I'm excited to have you around the table. Good morning once again. Isaac Bastian will jump in the pool at 9.33 this morning at the Youth Olympics there in Argentina. He'll be in Heat 3, lane number 1 of the 20-meter breaststroke, his third event of these games going on in Argentina. He will swim his final event on Thursday. That's the 50-meter breaststroke, Heat 4, lane number 2. Meantime, the Mamas Basketball Federation will be hosting a National Referee and Table Certification course beginning this coming Thursday through Saturday at the National Stadium. The hours between 6 and 9. It's for aspirants who want to um, be officials as well as table officials. And it is also open to um, high school coaches um, that coach in the... Um, G Triple SA, um, so that they can familiarize themselves with the um, FIBA rules that they that they play. Now the Bahamas will host a major event. They will welcome more than 495 athletes from 79 countries October 17th through the 21st. That's the World Junior Championships right here on our shores. If you haven't gotten your ticket yet, make sure to go out and get that. And joining us in studio tonight, seven days ago to the event, is Desmond Bull. He was on the team in 2013. He's competing in the 81 kg division. And Larry Marshall, he'll be in the 100 kg division. And guys, first of all, congratulations on making Team Bahamas. How how are things going so far? It's going good. We have a very tough training program that they're using to get us prepared for the tournament. And having been there before, you know the competition you're going to face. How has that prepared you? The experience has taught me very well. So I'm going to use that going into this competition. The stuff that I was weak on last time, I'm going to improve that so I could come out successful this time. And what about you? What have you been doing to prepare for this competition? Well, I've been, I've been doing, we have a hard training program, so we do a lot of randori and a lot of cardio work, trying to, so for our tournament, we could be able to go to long mile for medal rounds. You know, you have a lot of YouTube and you're able to see these athletes. What do you know about the athletes you'll be going up against? Um, most of them are very strong because they come from strong countries. So we have to lift a lot, make sure we lift. 
make sure we can compete with them. I know, talking to your coach a few minutes ago, some of these are coming from far, far away. Some of the best in the world. Some of these athletes will go on to win world and Olympic uh, medals, and you guys are right in the click with them. How, what's it going to take for us to get on the medal stand? It's going to take um, about four wins to get in the medal stand, and to do that, we're going to have to trust the game plan that our coaches have developed for us. Mm -hmm. what, do, what do you like about the team? A very small team, just our 14 athletes. Our team. Our team is oh um well with our team we've all been together for a long time so we know each other well and we know each other well and we've been so, uh, so yeah. how do you feel about the rest of the team you gonna perform? I think the team will do well because like, even like the girls they train with us and so they're very strong and fast and so how long have you guys been training? I've been doing judo for about eight years now. Mm -hmm. I'm a black belt. Ooh. I don't know some of the guys there in the studio they wanted you to put me on the mat, right? <laughs> yeah. What is the difference between judo, karate, and, and, and all those other events like that? Okay, so with judo, there's no striking, no kicking. As with karate, with judo, it's takedowns, pins, chokes, and arm locks. Mm -hmm. and now you want to encourage all the behemoths to come out there and they're up and we're black and go next week to support you guys. Yes, sir. We definitely need you guys' support. We can't win this without you all. Uh, what about you? Oh, well, I've been doing judo for two years. I'm also a black belt. So how are you able to call on, catch on so far? Two years, black belt. Yeah, he's going to practice every day. He never uh -huh. missed a practice. He just got my black belt about two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So working in your advantage, fighting here on the home soil, do you think that'll work in our advantage as we go into the championships next week? Yes, sir, definitely. The home crowd definitely will be a help. It's going to keep us pumped so we can go through all our fights. And I'm understanding that the event will get underway at 10 o'clock in the morning, then they'll have those preliminaries, then they'll come back in the afternoon. For Where sure. can we get our tickets? tickets. I know that's not, that's not you to worry about, right? <laughs> okay, probably not that. Coach DRC around me. But folks, make sure go on. Or they start on Monday at the Atlantis Resort, the World Judo Championship, the Bahamas with a 15-member team. They definitely, definitely are going to need your support. I know I'm going to be there. I'm going to take my family there. All the guys here from the ZNS team will also be there supporting Team Bahamas as they go into the World Junior Championship. Some 79 countries, 450 athletes, and guess what? We're going to be on top of the world. That's going to be it for your Morning Edition Sports. I'm Charles Fisher. Thanks for watching, and make sure we see you next week at the World Junior Championships. Fifteen forty AM, one hundred four point five FM plays all the Bahamian hits. All the hits, one station. The Bahamas is moving to the music, music that makes you feel good. Home of the number one Bahamian music beat, 1540 AM, 104.5 FM, The People Station. You thought it was the talk of the town, but get ready for more. More energy, more excitement, exhilarating, compelling, informative, educational talk on The Conversation. I'm Shanique Miller. Pull up a chair with a cup of tea and join me weekdays at 4 on Radio Bahamas, 1540 AM, 104.5 FM, and The Light, 810 AM for The Conversation. I'm excited to have you around the table. In our final look at weather, Tropical storm Nadine has intensified overnight in the far eastern Atlantic. It's now uh, packing winds of about 50 miles per hour. And then we have Leslie, which has been out there now for the past uh, 18 days. Uh, Leslie also has intensified. It's now a hurricane packing winds of 175 miles per hour. And then the big news right now is Michael, which is uh, taking aim uh, for the Florida Panhandle. It's about 140 miles to the south of uh, Panama City. That's in uh, Florida. And this system should be making landfall somewhere around around 2 o'clock this afternoon, meaning the eye of uh, Michael should be crossing the shoreline around 2, 3 o'clock. But in terms of the uh, tropical storm force winds, they extend outward 185 miles per hour 
85 miles, pardon me, from the center, meaning those tropical storm force winds have already begun impacting uh, the uh, Gulf Coast of the United States. And that will continue as Michael make that trek towards the north at around 13 miles per hour. Theta bands extending towards the south across central uh, Cuba. We have a secondary band that's uh, stretching right across Elutra and Cat Island. That will be firing up pockets of shots and thunderstorms as well as it lifts towards the north during the course of the day. And we have some more convection taking place in the southeast Bahamas. That too is firing up some shots and thunderstorms all moving towards the north so that once again there will be pockets of showers and thunderstorms today. Category 4, Michael will eventually turn towards the northeast, scooting across the, the Carolinas uh, by Thursday. And by Friday afternoon, we expect it to move over the open waters of the Atlantic. Forecast uh, for today, partly cloudy, a bit breezy. Your morning showers are developing, high temperature getting up to 87 degrees. And then tonight, partly cloudy once again with a few showers in the forecast, low temperature of 78 degrees. Extended weather forecast, showers taking place off and on into Saturday, drying out quite nice on Sunday, the early part of next week, once again, is looking pretty nice with an abundance of sunshine. Hold on. Thanks, Basil. And that does it for the morning edition. Thank you so much for waking up with us once again. I'm LaDawn Davis. See you right back here tomorrow morning.